Hey everybody, this is my first Doctor Who list video. I don't know if I'm going to make a lot of these. I definitely can because uh, as of recently I've had a resurgence in Doctor Who interest. Not really a resurgence because I've always been a fan, but I've had more of like a, you know, a vague obsession. Well, I've always had a vague obsession, but more of like a... I don't know. I, I'm very liking of talking about it. I like sharing it with people as I am with most of everything I do. I just share it with everybody. Because I want the whole world to know of the greatness that is Doctor Who, which kind of bites me in the behind more often than it should. Anyway, today we're going to be ranking my top ten episodes of the modern era, which is nine, series one, two... Okay. I... This is weird, and I know all of you... Chibnall fans are gonna hate me for this. I, as far as I'm concerned, modern era Doctor Who ended with series 10. I know, I know you're already just like putting a comment down or something. Listen, I haven't watched them. I doubt they're anywhere as good. I doubt any one of them will land on the top 10. Anywhere near it, actually. I don't like The Timeless Child. I heard about it, and I hate it. One day I'll watch Series 12, and maybe I'll make a funny video about how bad it is. And Series 11. But I have not watched them, and I probably will never watch them. Well, I mean, I probably will, but they're not canon to me. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure Timeless Child's going to get retconned anyway. I mean, they have to. It's so bad. Anyway, you Timeless Child fans out there, I know they exist. Just please be merciful. Anyway, we'll start off with number 10. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess I'll, I might do like a little panel that says number 10. Or I might just not edit this at all. I don't really care. Anyway, number 10, Vincent and the Doctor. Now, <laughs> I would place this episode at number 10 just because of the ending. Because this episode, even existing, proves that Doctor Who, like, it just proves why a show like Doctor Who needs to exist. Because the concept of meeting Vincent Van Gogh. Taking him into the future to see his artwork so he knows of his legacy. It just makes it so even concepts like that where you can take Vincent Van Gogh and he can see his legacy in the future and be like happy about it. God, it's so, it makes me cry, man. I love Vincent. And this episode just proves that shows like Doctor Who, even existing, like these amazing concepts and are just so great. And the episode itself is actually pretty good. It's it's a very focused on Vincent as his character. Now I haven't rewatched it in a long time, but it focuses a lot on Vincent as a character, his artistic talent, his depression. I love it. It's very what a historical episode should be. The the monster is very much on the side. It's not important. It's a metaphor for his depression, and it's just beautiful. It's it's perfect. It's a great episode. Definitely one of my favorites from series five. And it's also a key cog in Series 5 being probably my best. I I keep saying it's my favorite series. I keep flip-flopping between 5 and 4. They're both so good. For now, I'll just say Series 5 is my favorite. And that Vincent and the Doctor is definitely a big piece of that. And then coming in at number 9, also a series for contest with my number 1. We have the finale of that series, The Stolen Earth and Journey Then. Now... I love this episode because of how explosive it is. It really doesn't hold anything back, and it, it, I love how this episode doesn't really, like, wait for, for people who are just tuning in. Like, you, it rewards the Doctor Who fans for knowing everything, and it's just, like, great. I love how they're not pulling any punches. Every character's here. The Daleks are here. Davros is here. It's great. Even stuff that has never been introduced, the story doesn't, like, stop to explain it to you like davros never this was his first appearance in the modern era and it, it's make the audience is supposed to assume that he already exists and i guarantee a lot of people didn't know about davros that saw this because the modern era 
gets a lot more views than the classic era, unfortunately. I didn't know Dav- it was Davros who he was when I watched this, but I understood like the history between him and the Doctor, and that's all you really need. Uh, I love that focus for the Russell T. Davies era. Like it pulls from classic a lot, and it doesn't explain anything. <laughs> Doctor Who never does, but I don't know. It's just it's interesting. And I love this. It's just so, it's the finale. It's the finale of the Russell T. Davies era. I love it to death. God, I love it. All right. I don't know if I talked long enough on that one, but whatever. Uh, number eight, Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone. <sighs> so uh, I'm I'm actually surprised this is a divisive episode. A lot of people don't like it. I've always been a big fan of the Weeping Angels, and I feel like this is just like firing on all cylinders i like blink i think when that came out it probably was one of the best uh like scariest angel episodes but re-watching it it gets kind of boring and the whole thing is kind of built up to this weird twist but it is an awesome moment when like you see the transcript being written in that episode other than that i feel like the weeping angels don't get focused on too much in that one and it's kind of unfortunate so for that reason i'm actually putting this one on uh, and Blink's not on the list, so I'm putting this one on and Blink not because of how much focus the angels get. And I love how they're not really fighting the angels that, that much. They're really just, like, running from them. And I love the way that's handled because, like, they're getting cornered in the um, the maze of the dead. And they're, like, they have to turn off the gravity globe so they can use the anti-gravity boost to get onto the ship and even in the ship the angels jump up and they're chasing them through the ship keep pushing them back then they're into the the forest and the angels are still attacking them they have to keep moving it's great it's very fast paced i love it there's some great horror great comedy great character moments i love river song in this one it's really chilling and awesome i love it i'm a sucker for this one next up number seven i have human nature and the family of blood now, this one, it doesn't... Okay, Matthew, I know you're watching this. Matthew hates this episode. And I really... I, this is my opportunity to... To really explain why this episode is so great. So, allow me to focus here for a second. The main reason this episode is so great is it's... Focus on the Doctor's character... And he's, like, in it for, like, ten, ten minutes at the end of the second part. And it's it's really great how it kind of constructs and deconstructs the Doctor's character, his motivations, his character traits, stuff like that, and how his human self is modeled after that. The villain in this one is really chilling. The set design is amazing. Tenet's acting is great, as always. Um the dilemma the moral dilemma with like you know killing his human disguise in order to become the time lord to save the day and that kind of like that chilling moment where it's just like thank you hit film and that chilling moment when you know he's like so your job was to execute me those those deep moral questions are why this episode succeeds it's just like wow maybe the Maybe the doctor's not such a hero anymore. He did this. He put Martha in this terrible situation for months. And, you know, it didn't even really work out. And the solution in the end was just to free him, which seems like bad writing. But in the end, it's just like he did that to be kind, which is like the the biggest, you know, characteristic of the doctor it's just like he did this to be kind because you know, these the family have been chasing him trying to steal his immortality and he disguised himself so he wouldn't have to you know do this to them or it can be interpreted another way he didn't want them to have immortality because as a nearly immortal being it's not all that it's cut out to be immortality can be a pretty huge curse and he's like kind of bearing that burden which is also a really great character trait of the doctor is very selfless he's a hero uh, but this one also dictates the opposite so it's really like he could i have full fat videos made a video on this i also showed that to matthew he still wasn't convinced but full fat videos made a video on why this episode is so great it's perfect you could talk about this episode for ages and all the different questions it asks and answers and doesn't answer it's great number six utopia 
some people bunch this in with Sound of Drums and The Last of the Time Lords. I don't really, this, I mean, Russell T. Davies himself said that this was kind of a standalone episode, so I'm going to take that as my, my ticket to kind of focus on this one separately. So and that's a good thing because this one is weeks better than the others. So I love the Captain Jack coming back. Let's start there. Uh, the master introduction and the way that's approached in this one is, it's so good. Mm, pure Doctor Who, I love it. The reveal itself, that whole process, is it's one of the best cliffhangers in television history. I love it. I need to make a list of, like, top ten best cliffhangers. The dystopian future setting in this one, also amazing. I, it's very well realized. The rocket and the concept of utopia and how it's kind of a lie is also really great. Uh, this is just, like, great Doctor Who stuff. All right, my top five episodes. These are really, these are great. My, my number five is... I have a lot of experimental episodes in this one. I have two that are kind of just, like, great, and people talk about them a lot, so it's hard for me to really find things that I love about them. They're just great packages of Doctor episodes. But my number five is also one of those experimental episodes that I love, and that's Turn Left. I love... I love Don, and Don is my or Don is my second favorite companion, but I also love Wilf. Wilf is my favorite companion, and he is in this episode a lot, which is, I mean, already amazing. I'm surprised that I didn't put the end of time to, uh, episodes in here because I actually like those a lot. And Wilf, is, that's the only time Wilf's technically referred to as a companion because he actually is a companion in those episodes, which is why I love them so much. Uh, I didn't put them on for some reason, so whatever. We're going to keep going. But... This one, I love how it's kind of just like the whole Doctor Who, Russell T. Davies era played out in one episode right before the finale of everything. I think this episode where it was placed is genius. I love it so much. I love the way it introduced Rose, this whole parallel universe idea where the Doctor's dead and how it actually, I mean, it's not like a gimmick. It it plays a pivotal point in the story. I love how everything goes wrong, and it turns out Don is like the main ingredient in all of this, and it's just so fascinating. And I love Wilf, and I love the the moment when he cries because they're bringing back labor camps, and it's bad. <laughs> but I love seeing the Doctor Who universe taken out of context, where everything's horrible, and the aliens keep winning, and it's kind of ridiculous. But I love it, and I love Rose giving Donna the message, and I love the ending and the cliffhanger. It's great. I love Turn Left. Number four, and the Pandora opens and the Big Bang. I, whew, this would be, okay. So, I love the Pandora opens. I, it's just, I feel like the pacing in that one is so good. Like, it's, I mean, it, you, you get in and it feels like a lot's happening. But it also feels like very distinct, like major moments, because you have like the the ten minute, uh, cold open of the painting and whatnot, and transporting the painting to the doctor. I love the cold open. I think it goes on for a little bit too long. I still love it. Um, and then it's they go to Stonehenge. They're checking out the Pandorica. Uh, Cyberman attack. Rory comes back. It's a speech on Stonehenge. Then the Pandorica's opening, and then it's the twist. So, I, I mean, it's very just distinct action moments, but they're so seamlessly thread in. It just, it's, like, so, uh, it's just, like, it makes me so happy that, like, even a, a episode of Doctor Who can be structured so just, uh, buttery smooth. It's so good. The writing is incredible. These character moments with Amy... And when she finally recognizes Rory, and then she dies, and then the universe ends, and the Doctor gets stuck in the Pandorica, it is so good. It is the best cliffhanger in this. Well, I said that about Utopia, didn't I? This is the best cliffhanger. Utopia is the second. Uh, I said that about Turn Left too. Well, a, bu- a bunch of good cliffhangers. Anyway, Big Bang is also. I feel like people don't like it as much because it's just kind of like lazy editing where. Um, it's the excuse of how, you know, the universe is ending and we're at the center, so we're not dying yet, and it gives us just not enough time to fix everything. I, I still like it. I think the focus on the vortex manipulator is a lot of fun. I love zip-zapping around and whatnot, and 
pulling things from the past and using it to contact the past in order to realign the future. I love the Fez. I like the Big Bang. Number three, the 11th hour. Now, this one is, I, it's so nostalgic to me. Every time I watch this one, I'm like, mm, my childhood. This is, mm, I get, my first Doctor Who episode was Planet of the Dead. I know I'm kind of a newbie to the Doctor Who, the Doctor Who scene, technically. I'm pretty sure I watched Planet of the Dead when it aired, which is strange because I'm from America, and maybe maybe it wasn't. But I remember it being my first episode. I remember watching it with my dad, and I'm pretty sure that was my first episode. I can't remember. You'd have to ask my dad. I'm pretty sure. I've That's my earliest memory about Doctor Who. I remember watching Series 5 and 6 when they aired, so I was definitely a fan by that point but it didn't really air in america until that point so i might have been doing a rewatch of planet of the dead anyway th uh this is back when i i think i was start like first starting to watch the seasons again i don't know i might be misremembering but it was still very young in my life and i remember watching them um and this one is just so the cinematography in this one it's just mm, i love art and I love the art of cinematography, and I love film, and this episode makes me, like, so happy. This is just such a beautiful episode of television. It's not shot like a TV show at all. This is, like, next-level stuff, if I'm being honest here. Um, I love Matt Smith. I think this is one of his best performances in the role. I love the introduction of the companion and the concept of, you know, leaving her when she's... E a young kid and then coming back later and she's all grown up and that's really traumatizing for her and how it plays a core part of her character and how she kind of views the doctor as this like god and it, it's really just like a cool concept and the way that's handled it actually pretty like believable because of the way he kind of stumbles in tells her it's a time machine and she's just like wow and she believes him because you know he's telling the truth uh, and it's just like a really like childhood like wonder kind of thing and then she grows up, and then he comes back, and then she gets to experience it. So he kind of views them as, like, this god. And he always saves the day, which also plays a part in, like, you know, the god complex where she believes in the Doctor. I'm just talking about all of Matt Smith anyway. The Eleventh Hour. This episode is amazing. It sets up so much, and it starts the run to, you know, the best series in the show's history. It handles post-regeneration, incredible focuses on the characters and the fast-paced action and the dialogue and it's great and what else is there to be said about this one anyway now we have some of the best episodes in television history all right here and i usually don't show these to people because i really want them to be i really want them to appreciate these episodes because i could just like I could throw them, like, if I really wanted to show someone Doctor Who, I could show them, you know, like, Heaven Sent. We all know this, number one on this list. But I could show them Heaven Sent, and they, I know, they would like it. But they don't understand Doctor Who and the character of the Doctor. So they'd be like, yeah, I liked it. But you really have to be just, like, deep, knee-deep in this lore. And just, like, you just get so focused in the Doctor's character and Heaven Sent. And the beautiful cinematography, and the great acting by Capaldi, and the great message, and the beautiful ending. We're not talking about Heaven Sent, but I could show that to someone. I feel like the, they need to be in Doctor Who before I show them that to really like it and be like someone who watches Doctor Who and watches Heaven Sent for the first time it would be like that is better than anything I've ever seen in my whole life. So I'm I'm really waiting. It's hard. Because I, it's Doctor Who is just so hard to like wedge a person in there because it's so like long. It's such a long TV show. It goes on for so. There's so much lore. Like if you really wanted to start someone off with an unearthly child, like good luck, man, because that episode is so boring. And starting off with the modern era, then you're just skipping all of classic Who. So it's just like there's not a real proper start to this the show, and it's kind of hard. So I really appreciate when someone gives the show a chance and actually likes it, and then I can show them a bunch of episodes. And then the, when, the fun, when the time finally comes to show them Heaven Sent, I am so ready for them to just like look at me and be like, this is one of the greatest episodes of TV 
in my entire life. And I, I'm just so, that is going to be like the, the highlight of my life. Anyway, we're not even talking about Heaven Sent yet. Number two, The Waters of Mars. Um, this episode is looked at very wrong as far as I'm concerned. This episode is The Fires of Pompeii Gone Wrong. And allow me to go a little bit deeper with this one. So, the Doctor arrives on Mars in the near future. This is a fixed point in time. The Doctor cannot save any of these people. They have to die in order for history to take its course. And that is his duty as a Time Lord to make to maintain the order of time. Or else, you know, paradoxical events will happen and the whole of history will change. That's why, you know, time travel in TV is kind of handled poorly because you don't really have time travel that's respected. It's more of like a selfish thing. Whereas with Doctor Who, you get like this selfless character of the Doctor who's trying to uphold, you know, the Time Lord way of life and being like, no, this is my grander duty as a Time Lord to be like, no, I can't, I can't save these people. They have to die. Even though it's going to be so hard for me, I have to let them die. And that whole, the way that that is approached in this one is great. Also, um, the, the Planet of the Dead is the first Doctor episode shot in HD. And then, you know, on from that point, it's shot in HD. So that includes The Waters of Mars and The End of Time Part 1 and 2. All of those episodes in the specials look great. The Waters of Mars, the lighting, and just like the, the way the light goes into the camera, it's so beautiful. It's so crisp. High def. I love it. So this episode looks great, especially the TARDIS interior, especially in this episode and the end of time part one and two. I think it's, it looks so good in those. Um, so high def is definitely something this episode has going in contrast to the whole of the uh, Russell T. Davies era. So we continue on with this episode. The flood is uh, consuming people, zombifying all of the, the people, and they're slowly dying, and the doctor recognizes okay, this is history taking its course, I need to leave before, you know, I get caught up in the mix of this, and that'll be bad. So, um, he goes on a little side quest with Captain Adelaide Brooke. They have a heart-to-heart about how a Dalek spared her life. Uh, it ties back into the main theme of the episode where it's just like, yeah, the, Do- the Dalek spared your life because you have to die here, not in the Stolen Earth and Journey's End. And then we get to when this episode really, really kicks off. The Doctor's leaving the base. He's connected to the radio. Or rather, no, not yet. He's in the airlock. Brooke confronts him as be like, tell me what happens. I know you know what happens. It's so obvious. He tells her with a heavy heart, she's very emotional. Don't let me die. He's just like, I, I gotta go, man. There's no way I can save you. She lets him go. They're all dying in the radio. He's just trying so hard to ignore it. They're all dying one by one. It's such a sad moment. And, you know, the their escape plan is being thwarted. The more and more the, the episode goes on, the flood infects, you know, what is the guy's name? Uh, I don't remember his name. But the guy piloting the rocket. I feel bad because I've watched this episode so many times. Um... So he gets infected, and he blows it up before he can, you know, take the rocket back to Earth and infect the whole world. And so they're stranded. The base is exploded. They're about to lose oxygen. The Doctor stands up in all of the fire around him on Mars, and the pillar falls. And it's just this moral dilemma, this close-up. He's fighting. He's just like, no, don't go back. You're not allowed to. I love how the very end of this, like, the last two on this list are going to be, like, double the length of the entire video. And he's like, no, don't go back. And then he goes back, and it's such a mixed emotion from the audience. You're just like, wait, no, don't go back. What are you doing? But it's also like, yes, save them. They deserve to live. But it's also, like, really disturbing because he's not supposed to be doing this, and he's kind of loving it because he's going against what he's always been doing his whole life is just like being very selfless hero 
and he finally just says, no, I have to save them. I have to, I do what I want. And it's kind of triumphant in a really twisted way, but it's also, at the very core of it, very wrong. And then Captain Adelaide, look, she she turns on Action 5, and the whole base is going to get nuked. And she is ultimately the one that's like, no, we have to die. I was wrong, you were right, but now you're wrong. And she saves them, and they land on Earth. And he's just a moment of pure ego on the Doctor's part. And he's selfless. The Time Lord victorious. And he scares the other crewmates. And Adelaide Brooke is just like, no, you're wrong. You're not supposed to have done this. And he's just like, tough, I do what I want now. The Time Lords are gone. And I love the documentary, the Doctor Who Confidential episode uh, for this episode because there's a David Tennant interview that really like goes into detail on why this version of the Doctor is wrong. Because, like, if he goes down this path of the Time Lord Victorious, what's to stop him from, you know, going to the parallel world and saving Rose? Or, you know, going back to Doomsday, rather, and saving her before she goes into the parallel world? Or bringing back Donna's memory? Uh, or stuff like that. It's just like, no. You gotta focus on your, your, your greater good and whatnot. Anyway... Captain Adelaide Brooke, you know, kills herself in order to reset the timeline. And it hits him right between the eyes, what he's done. And that whole, th that ending sequence is one of the most, like, what did I watch? Was this a TV show that was aired in 2009? That was so good. And I just, I can't wait until someone sees this. That loves Doctor Who and has never seen it. Just like, what? This is so good. And it's just like, yes! It's amazing! Oh my god, this episode is one to never be forgotten. I love it. And uh, number one, Heaven Sent. I really don't know if I need to talk about this one. This is by far the best episode of anything in my life better than spider-man 2 better than any movie i've ever seen any episode of doctor who i've ever seen obviously any episode of any tv show i've ever seen heaven sent beats it yeah pretty much by a long shot <sighs> this episode is a beauty in terms of cinematography this is the most beautiful doctor who episode ever it has Peter Capaldi by himself monologuing the whole time. It's incredible. The themes of how this whole thing is just a metaphor for the Doctor being trapped in a cycle of, you know, grief because he lost Clara and he has to break the wall, move on. It's so powerful. It's so great. I love how it deconstructs the Doctor and his genius and what he's scared of, and the idea of confession is such a serious threat, how it kind of takes up the hybrid a little bit, the storeroom is great, the whole castle, everything. I mean, I've just, I've talked about this episode so much. I think the ending is like one of the best, like, I mean, I know I hyped up the Waters of Mars a lot, because not everyone knows that episode is so good. I feel like this one is generally considered to be the best episode of Doctor Who. Like, objectively. And so it, it, it kind of leaves me with not a lot to say. And, I, I mean, I've watched, I've watched this episode well over, like, hundreds of times. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway, that was the list. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and comment. I'll hear you guys think. And remember, stay gamer.